Yes, I do remember tonight's business meeting. Uh, but I do have a, a thought for us tonight. I'd like to go to Numbers 13, a really familiar story. To give you a quick thought of it. We're going to start reading uh, Brock in verse 25 of Numbers chapter 13. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel under the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. They told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Amic there. The Melchites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it. For we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. They brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Let's pray. Well, we thank you this night, Lord, a chance to be in your house. Thank the Lord for the worship that's taking place. Uh, Lord, we're thankful for our young people and uh, their willingness to, to get up and sing for you. And Lord, for uh, the gospel that's getting showered on in their lives. And we pray even uh, tonight or for next week we haven't been praying for we're behind and i just pray lord uh, special blessings on, on our church and on all the folks as Eddie said not just young people but everybody that comes and takes part in vacation bible school next week it's such a great ministry of our church that you've always blessed us with and i pray lord that same blessing uh, this coming week but tonight lord as your word goes out i pray that our hearts will be open and we can be faithful Lord and obedient to it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't want to hurt your feelings or show nobody's age, but uh, how many of y'all here wear bifocal glasses? Bifocal glasses. I remember when my doctor first started telling me I might have something. And uh, he said, "All in, he said, the more of them numbers on the, in your age go up, the closer you got to need something like that." Well, I, I wear contacts because I got horrible eyes. I've always had horrible eyes. Without my contacts, I can't see nothing. With my contacts, I can't see nothing either. So I'm really, really bad. But I couldn't couldn't read anymore. Y'all, y'all remember when y'all thought I was having a stroke up here that day? And all the words was just jumping off the page at me. I couldn't make nothing out of it. And finally, the doctor prescribed for me bifocal contacts. Anybody here wear bifocal contacts? Uh, you have, if you don't wear bifocal contacts, let me explain to you how bifocal contacts work. Because it's really a neat technology if you don't know it. Because, you know, with bifocal glasses, you got your lens that you're looking out, and you got your lens that you look down, and so it makes sense. Well, in contacts, your contacts move all over your eyes, so you can't get them set in there where the reading part's on the bottom and the and the far distance is on the top that'd be impossible so they figured out how to do it and they use your your brain and and what god gave you and the intricacies of this body that we don't even understand so what they do is in those contacts they make rings so you got a almost like a bullseye you got a ring that is for your outward vision your far vision the next ring is for that reading vision, which is a totally different vision. 
then the next ring is back out again, and the next ring is reading, and the next ring is back out, and the next ring. So you have a big bullseye of focuses and powers on your contacts. Takes you a little bit to get used to, but what happens is, is as soon as you start using them, your body will adjust. And when you look out, your brain will only use the rings that bring distance into focus. Then when you look down to read, your body will shut those off and only use the rings that it needs to focus on the words on a page. And your body's so good at it, you can look up, see good, look down, see good, and you go, wow, these things are great. That's kind of the technology behind them, and it's really neat how your body can do that by what it focuses on taking over and becoming the dominant vision that you need. This is a familiar story. I'm, it's it's, it's uh, visiting now. I'm not going to go into detail of the story. You know the story. The spies have gone out. They've come back. Caleb and Joshua, hey, we can get this. Ten others, no. They got giants over there. They got big folks over there. They got walled cities. They got more than we got. They're stronger than us. They're meaner than us. If you look back at the text, uh, I just Caleb says it this way in verse 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Caleb's focus was on his faith in the Lord. And Caleb's focus was on the milk and the honey and everything that flowed and the fertileness of this land. Those 10 other, as the Bible calls them, evil spies, their focus was they couldn't see the goodness of the milk and honey and couldn't see a faith in God that was strong enough to overcome their fear of these giants, how bad it was, and how they could never overtake them. Two different focuses on the same thing. I'm sure you've heard all your life those things. People that can't see the forest for the trees. What are, what are they focusing on? Well, Caleb had it right. And uh, Brad and Allison named one of their sons Caleb. I said a long time ago, if we ever had a son, I was going to name him Caleb. So I just have to adopt your Brad and Allison. I just have to uh, use that because we way past that now. But I love that name. If you'll remember in the story how it goes is God's punishment, this is what starts the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness as punishment to the people listening to and the 10 evil spies who instead of focusing on their faith in God focused on the problem at hand that they just didn't think they could surmount. And so for 40 years they wandered because 40 years is the length of a generation and every one of those guys died out. Those 10 spies died. Everybody that listened to them died. Everybody said, oh, they're right, we can't do it. They all died. But if you remember the story, Caleb did die. Joshua did die. And when it was all said and done and they finally went over into the land that 40 years before, Caleb had said, hey, we can go take this. We can overcome it because of his faith in the Lord. He got his spot. If you remember, he said, hey, at the age of 84, give me my mountain. I want my spot. And the Bible says he was just as strong at that day when he said, give me my mountain, as he was 40 years before when he had said then, hey, we are able to overcome. It was all what their focus was. Caleb's focus was simple. Faith in his Lord. The other's focus was simple. They forgot about the Lord. They couldn't see God. They couldn't see the goodness. They couldn't see the faith. All they could see was the obstacle, the problem, the suffering, and that's what they focused on. Every day you and I get a chance to determine what we're going to focus on. What are we going to see? Which vision are we going to use? Are we going to look down and just see what's right there in front of us? Are we going to look up and see what's out there ahead of us by faith in the Lord. And as Christians, we got that opportunity to do that, and the Lord will bless us if we'll just use that vision of faith 
and use that vision of trusting him and not worrying about the circumstances. Uh, Brock, I'm going to get you to flip a couple. Would you go to Psalms 119, the longest book in the Bible, and go to verse 18? Psalm 119, 18. Father says, open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. That should be our, Lord, open our eyes and let us focus on our faith. Show us the wondrous things. Caleb was looking at the wondrous things. Those evil guys, their eyes were closed to the wondrous things and all they were concentrating on was all the bad, all the negative. And it's so easy in today's world to focus on the bad and focus on negative. There's so much bad and there's so much negative. But you know what? In spite of all the bad and negative, there's still so much blessings in faith and in walking in light of the Word of God and what God's promised us that it overcomes all those other things. When I hear this verse, I think of, I guess that tonight would be a, a Old Testament greatest hits because two of my favorite stories are that one and this one. One more time, Brock, would you go to uh, 2 Kings uh, chapter 6, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 14. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not. And I love this line. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. So again, the servant has, has woken up, woke outside, and they are surrounded by chariots, Horses, an army of folks ready to destroy. And all we got is the servant. But don't forget who else we got. The man of God. And he says in the King James Version, Alas, how shall we? What are we going to do? And the man of God looks at his servant and says, Fear not. There's more with us than there are with him. Yeah. Now, no doubt, that servant looked around like, <laughs> well, I'll count two. And I, and I was out there. I saw how many there are. So I know there's still some doubt there because just common sense telling me there's two of us, there's hundreds, maybe thousands of them compassed around us. So what's it say? And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, smite this people I pray thee with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, this is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me and I'll bring you to the man whom you see. But he led them to Samaria. And it was all over and done. They are all destroyed. But that line, there's more with us than there are with them. And then Elisha prayed, Lord, open his eyes. Let him see through faith, not the circumstances. Last one, Brock, we'll close. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, a verse we read often, but we don't read the second half. I tell you all the time, you know, we, come up, we read parts of verses, and maybe we don't read the whole verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6. We know this. Paul says, therefore, we're always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. And then verse 7, we'll leave this little parentheses out. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We get to choose. Which focus are we going to use? Are we going to focus on our faith in God or are we going to focus on what we see, feel, and hear? 
Oh, that the Lord would open our eyes and let us see there's more with us than there are with them. And may we look through the eyes of faith and have confidence in God and place all our trust in Him and forget about what the world says and what our eyes tell us and what we think and hear because we are by default sinners and humans. But we don't serve sinners and humans. We serve an almighty God. Amen. Let us walk by faith, not by sight. It is business me. Let's stand and sing a verse of uh, invitation, and then we'll get right into the business now.